the most important parts of hops production is the handling and processing of the cones after harvest. The quality and aromatic compounds of fresh hops begin to degrade quickly once harvested, so it's important that the cones are either brewed or dried immediately. There are many ways that you can dry hops, depending on the amount that needs to be dried, space available, and available budget. For large-scale operations, an oast or hops kiln are commonly used. These are one to two-story buildings where hops are spread out onto drying floors with hot air rising from a heat source below. Hops are typically dried at 120 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. The goal is to reach a moisture content of 5 to 6 percent moisture, or the amount of water in the total dry weight of your hops. An easy way to calculate this is to weigh your hops before and after they are dried. You would then divide the first weight by the second weight to get the percent moisture content of your cones. These general rules also apply to small scale drying, which typically use dehydrators, ovens, bards, or sheds, depending on the size of the operation. In this video, we will show you how to build your very own hops dryer by using an example of a shipping container that we converted into a walk-in dehydrator located here at the Fruit Research Station in Clarksville, Arkansas. The main components of your hops dryer will include insulation, shelving, heating and cooling units, thermometers, and a dehumidifier. Hops drying is a delicate process which means that there's some considerations that you should keep in mind when selecting a location for your hops dryer. Number one, how close is your dryer to your hop planting? Having your dryer close to your hops ensures that they can be dry quickly as the quality begins to degrade as soon as the cones are harvested. Number two, does your space have access to electricity? Most of the equipment you will need in the drying process requires a power source. If your space doesn't have electricity, then we recommend seeking a professional for installation which was the approach that we took when installing electricity into our shipping container. Number three, does your space have windows? Windows allow light inside, which not only degrades the quality of your hops, but releases the heat from your dryer that's necessary for temperature regulation. Number four, is your space well ventilated? Does your space have a sink or drainage access? Ventilation and dehumidifying also aid in the hops drying process by regulating temperature. The dehumidifier will need drainage access in order to release the water it collects from inside your dryer. Once you've decided on the location, it's time to prepare your space. The materials you'll need include wired shelves, ceiling mounted heater, mounted fan, temperature controller, thermometer and hygrometer, and a dehumidifier. First, make sure that the space you've selected is ventilated, insulated, and has electricity before you proceed with setting up the equipment inside of your dryer. The shipping container that we used for our dryer didn't have these things previously installed. If you would like a more detailed guide on the materials we used and the steps in that process, check out our upcoming fact sheet that will be out later this fall. Once you have your space prepared with electricity, ventilation, and insulation, it's time to set up the drying equipment. Each piece of equipment plays an important role in the regulation of temperature, which ultimately determines the success of the dryer and the quality of your hops for processing. A heater will help maintain a constant temperature that's needed for drying hops. We recommend a ceiling mounted heater as it allows for more room for shelving and other equipment. This unit has a 750-1500 watt capacity. An oscillating fan helps with air movement to ensure that the hot air from the heater is evenly distributed throughout the dryer. We recommend getting one that is ceiling mounted as well. The fan we used is six inches in size with a 110 volt capacity fan. A thermometer and hygrometer will allow you to monitor the temperature and humidity inside of your dryer. Drying hops is a delicate balance and you wanna make sure that the humidity is not too high as this will slow the drying process. We recommend placing the sensors close to the door so that you can quickly open the room to check the readings without releasing too much heat. Another option would be is to get a wireless model so you can check the temperature and humidity without opening the door. A dehumidifier helps control the amount of humidity in the air. As previously mentioned, high humidity slows down the drying process. You should select the size of your dehumidifier based on the size of your dryer. 
For our example, we used a single unit with a 50 pint capacity for an 8 foot by 8 foot by 7.5 foot space. One thing to keep in mind when setting up your dehydrator is the proximity to a drainage area. Allowing the dehydrator to freely drain lessens how often you have to open the door while the hops are drying, preventing less heat from escaping. For our dryer, we placed the dehydrator close to the exit and fed the drainage tube outside of the building. Shelving will be needed to store the hops so they can be dried properly. Wire shelving allows for airflow up through the hops as they dry. The size and number of shelves you can have will be dependent on the size of your space. We recommend having a minimum of 12 inch spacing between shelves in order to have enough room to store the hops. We store our hops in paper bags, but there are other types of trays or boxes available that could also be used when drying. Once your equipment is all set up, it's time to test your new dryer. We recommend that before harvest begins, you test to make sure that your dryer can maintain the desired temperature and humidity for at least 24 hours. Now you're ready to start drying your hops. For our dryer, it takes about, on average, 14 to 18 hours to dry 10 pounds of hops. The drying time will, of course, vary depending on the moisture content of the cultivars you are using. We hope that this video was helpful in building your own walk-in hops dryer. Next, we'll take a look at how hops are processed after drying with a vacuum sealing demonstration. Thanks so much for watching!